Hey everybody, Chad from Patriot Astro here. Um, I've seen some people struggle with the Sky Atlas lately um, in various live streams or recorded videos. And what I wanted to do is just show you a couple things I do that may help you. So first things first, if I go to Nina's Sky Atlas and I'm using the 111 uh, version 75 nightly, um, if I go ahead and just do a generic search, you notice there's a couple problems, right? So just doing a unfiltered search is going to give me objects within Astro Dark and my viewing time uh, where I'd like to image things, but also a lot of objects that are not. And worse than that, it's going to give me objects that are not even available for my location, right? There, there's no time where this is available for me right now. So how can we fix this? Well, to best illustrate that, we're going to go over to Stellarium. And within Stellarium, first thing I'm going to do is just make it a little bit darker. We're going to move to 10 p.m. here, local time. And then I'm going to set some viewing options. So from a marking perspective, I'm going to set an equatorial grid. And I've set a color for that that's nice and bright. So you can do that as well. You can see it set there. I'm also going to set the meridian. And that's a bright color as well. So you can see we've got our lines set up. The meridian goes straight over north to south. So if I flip all the way over here, well, if I don't make you dizzy in the process, we're going to get to the north and we'll see our celestial north pole is up here and we should see Polaris and we do, right? So there's our celestial north pole. Let me try to click off and get rid of that text. So <clears throat> what we want to do here is first we'll look at uh, declination. So um, declination goes from negative 90 at the south, southernmost point to positive 90 at the northernmost. So right here is plus 90. And if I flip to the southern side, you'll notice that about as far as we go um, is here. And if I push it all the way to the edge, we can see that's negative 50. So I'm going from negative 50 to positive 90. So if I come back in here in my search and I go to coordinates, I can say show me from negative 50 to positive 90 and do a search. And what that should have done is got rid of all the blank space, right? So we shouldn't have any more blank ones. This one's not fantastic, but it does peak. So we can see um, that it is at least somewhat visible theoretically. So now the next problem we have is that uh, we want to find things that are visible during the nighttime, right? A lot of these are visible during the day. We want to see things that are from, um, you know, within astro dark, if you will. So to do that, what I like to do is set... Um, just kind of a random number here. We'll just go ahead and pick, uh, let's go pick five and six, and we'll go ahead and search. And this is right ascension. So five hours of right ascension to six hours right ascension. And what you first thing you'll notice is that all of our meridian peaks line up. So these are objects whose meridian, whose peak altitude where they would meridian flip occurs between five and six hours of right ascension, right? So they're all lined up. Okay, well, that's great, but this is not when I want them to line up. I want them to line up somewhere maybe right before sunset so that I can get, you know, any objects that trail off into astro dark. There may be some imaging time available. So here we have um, along the bottom of this altitude chart, we have a time scale with double zero or midnight right in the middle here. So I'm at this location, which is, uh, we'll say, we'll just call it 15, which is 3 p.m. And I want to get to about 20, right? So from 15 to 20 is five hours. I want to move five hours to the right. So I'm going to add five hours of right ascension. So I'm going to go to 10 and we'll just make this 10 and 11 so we can see. And what we should have now is results of um, targets that peak in altitude between 10 and 11 right ascension, right? So they're right here. So we're getting closer. Now what I need to do is extend the um, end value all the way through to maybe an hour past sunset, and we'll call that seven. So we're going from about 20 here to about seven. So 20 to 24 is four hours, right? Here, and then another seven. So that's about 11. It's about 11 larger than we started. So 11 greater than 10 is 21. So we've got an 11 hour window. And now what we should have is objects that uh, peak in altitude just before sunset and um, uh, peak in altitude just after sunrise. So again, we don't have any blanks and we don't have any daytime 
um, elements. And again, you can widen this if you want, but this, this will help you simplify when you're looking for things. So if I want to see galaxies that are up at night, I can say, go ahead and show me that. And here we are. I've got just my galaxies that are actually available for imaging. And again, you can play with these values to, to maybe uh, get some additional ones um, that may make sense for you. So, um, you know, hopefully this in and of itself proves to be helpful. Um, there is a flaw with this approach though, and you have to be careful, and it's just because of the way the filtering works, is we're going and saying things from right ascension 10 to 21, and if I go back to Stellarium here and look at this, um, where is, if I push it to the side again, uh, 10 is way up here. So this whole gap here, right, that whole chunk of the night sky and below is below 10, okay? And then if I come over here, we have 21. So there's going to be a chunk of the night sky that this carves out and we don't have objects. So um, again, some of this may be low enough for you where it doesn't matter, but uh, just, just be careful. There are certainly some targets in here that are worth shooting. Um, but you're going to miss them with this type of a search. Um, so just kind of a heads up on that. It, it'll it'll give you a better selection of targets with a lot less fiddling around and scrolling and clicking through pages, uh, but it does miss a few things. So if you're bothered by this um, and the missing uh, stuff that you might have uh, below Polaris, uh, there are some options here. It requires additional searches, but so let's think about this. Um, between zero and 10, we're missing some things on right ascension, right? And then from 21 to 24. So let's just focus first on zero to 10. And, you know, if I just do this search, that's fine, but we're going to get a lot of other things that aren't visible, right? When we look at zero to 10, again, it's, it's where we'd expect it to be based on our previous discussion. But what I care about is, you know, what's going to be up in the air here, high enough for me to, to, uh, actually image. So what I can do is um, come over to minimum altitude and let's go ahead and again this is sort of mirroring the timeline we have here. So let's say you know astro dark let's just call it 22, um, 2200 hours and let's say that I really care about things that are at a certain height between 22 and maybe midnight right. So let's say between 22 and double zero, right, which is midnight. And let's say I want it to be for my viewing, I mean, looking at this, let's just say 30 uh, degrees, right? And again, your mileage may vary. So I'm going to say that. Now, I, I don't know if this is a bug or not, but I would go click reference date and select the current date before you do a search when you're using minimum altitude for some reason. Um, occasionally, if I don't do that, I actually am not getting responses. So if I look at this now, what have I done? Well, I said anything that's, you know, on, on this side, right? So we've we've isolated this portion of it before we were looking at in here with 10 to 21 in, in right ascension. Now I'm looking at zero to 10. So I'm kind of looking over here only where things are peaking. But specifically, I added this altitude portion and I said, well, it's got to be up at least high enough during this period of the night. So now I am getting some of those targets, right, that have um, those right ascensions that I would have missed in my first query. And if I look at this, there's actually a good number of them. So I've got 222 of them here of additional targets. But, you know, if I start to uh, break this down and say, well, I'm only really looking at galaxies tonight, um, you know, what do I want to look at? And, and that's fine, right? So I can kind of minimize it. But I am getting those things that are closer uh, to Polaris, right? Some of these objects uh, here, like 72 degrees, right, that are kind of visible all the time. So I'm getting some more things. And then again, I could repeat this query um, yet again. Now, in this case, again, we're going to go from the other side of our previous initial query, right, 21 to 24, but we want it to be 30 degrees over here somewhere. So let's say maybe from uh, three to five or maybe two to five as an example. So let's go from two to five and we'll keep our 30 degrees and we'll see. And now we're getting the other side, right? So we're getting things that are rising at that time of the night that may still have some good imaging time left in them, right? Some of the late night targets. Um, and again, there's about 80 here that match in this particular case. So um, you can find those other targets. Um, 
but you know it, it took multiple queries to do that. Um, another reason that this can be helpful is if you deal with um, PhD2 guiding and you know with PhD2 guiding you often have to do a recalibration and calibration should occur between um, uh, declination negative 20 and positive 20 so I can basically again do this and just adjust these numbers to negative and positive that are available during my nighttime window and now here I am finding some targets and again I can tighten that up I can say you know I want from 10 to you know maybe 13 the beginning of the evening right um, so I can find these targets that are just after their meridian flip uh, in astro dark probably when I am imaging at night but they are in the right spot in the sky again between uh, negative 20 and positive 20 declination and these would all be suitable candidates for um, PhD to calibration so just something else to think about there now one other thing I want to show you since we're looking at this is um, one other item you might want to consider and that would be to add a custom horizon file. These are pretty simple to make. It takes a little time. You have to go outside, um, stand where your mount would be, uh, point to uh, north. And then once you're there, north is zero. And then you just kind of go up and see, you know, how high up is the um, whatever object that is in your way. It's a house, it's a tree, it's something else. For me, it's 14 degrees at north is a tree line above 14 I'm okay below 14 I can't view um, then I went to the right a little bit uh, and I went to six degrees and I could see well there it came down a little to about 11 uh, degrees and there are applications that can help you with your phone as you turn around it can help you get these numbers but what I'm trying to do here is basically spin completely in a circle and denote where those changes occur in my horizon so that I know that anything above these points are visible anything below is not And you may want to pad that a little bit so you go all the way back around and here I you know didn't quite make it to 360 because again that'll just wrap back around to north is zero and what I'll do is I'll go and apply this here and I have this on my desktop and it's just a horizon file so I'll add that now if I come back into the sky atlas and again let's look at galaxies and I'm going to go back to my original search negative uh, 50 and 90 so I'll put my original parameters back in galaxy but now I have a horizon line so if I do a search now I'm gonna get things that are visible at my time but I have this horizon line to help me out a little bit so again like this one here Dunlop 482 uh, is not available for me because of my horizon line because of trees and houses that are in the way um, this can be very handy so um, again this can help now one last thing that may even be more useful than what you have here built into Nina. Um, I like to use Telescopius. So telescopius.com, um, you can get a free account, put in your information for your location. I'm in the uh, greater Atlanta area. So again, it gives me these, these parameters and I can see my astro dark starts at 1012 and it ends at 455 AM. So I can see that and I can go in and do a search, a deep sky search. And notice it already applies my astro dark timeline, but I can modify this. I can say that, well, I only want to look at things that are 35 degrees in altitude or higher for at least so many hours. Maybe I need at least minimum three hours of imaging, or I only want things that I can get five hours of imaging on that are above that mark in a certain distance away from the moon. And again, I can do object types here. I'm only looking at galaxies. So again, now this is a little bit better than what we had in Nina because now we have this minimum um, altitude combined with a minimum amount of time above that altitude. So what I can actually do here is find really good targets, really suitable targets for imaging. Um, and we can take that one step further. So here, let's say I want to start with M94. Go ahead and add that to a list. Let's go create a new list and I'm going to call this um, tonight image. So I'm going to call this just tonight image and I'm going to go ahead and create it. And I've added this to this particular list. So M94 is on that list. And that's the beginning of the evening. So let's say I want to go look for something at the end of the evening as well. And let's say we want this galaxy. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do this one here. So I can just see tonight image is already here. I can just click it and add it. So now if I want, I can go view this list. 
and see those two objects are on my list. Um, they're available, but what's great about this is that I can actually download this as a CSV and it'll download into my downloads folder. I can come back into Nina, I can go to my sequencer, I can say import target, I can go to my downloads folder and I can select that list I downloaded and it is my sequence now. So notice I have the data, I have the information, it has applied the Sky Atlas information in my horizon file so I can get a better look at it, but I've got this information here um, that I've imported from Telescopius. And again, you may find the Telescopius filtering parameters to be a little bit more flexible for you um, than what, what we have in Nina. But, you know, hopefully these tips can help. You can figure out how to fine tune it. If you have some of your own tips, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear how, uh, how you're going through your own image selection process and if you're doing any other filtering uh, within Nina or elsewhere on the internet. And if you have any other ideas of things that you'd like me to cover, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to uh, go ahead and do that. Um, thanks for watching and clear skies.